Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, Zhao, for the invite to, to speak about the work that we've been doing in this area. Um, I will just start to share my screen, so just bear with me. Um, yeah, just to confirm, I'm John Kirkby, Executive Director and National Secretary for, for PFC UK. So I'm just going to give a, a short presentation about the um, the work that we've done in the international level around EUDR um, and the alignment project that is, uh, that is currently ongoing. Um, <clears throat> I think when the, the legislation uh, was first kind of confirmed in, in mid-2023, uh, the first question that was asked was, you know, was there really a, a part to play for, for PFC within the uh, within within UDR? And I think it became obvious very very quickly that uh, we need to, to provide a, a solution to our to our members and certificate holders that will allow them to uh, demonstrate compliance with the new legislation. So, a number of work streams were produced, uh, which I'll run through. One was on the sustainable forage management standard. And the development of an amendment of that standard. One was in relation to the chain of custody uh, standard. Also, how to manage data within the UDR, geolocation, harvesting dates, etc. And then also how we engage with the EU to make sure that we are providing up to date and relevant information to our members, certificate holders, to ensure that they, um, again, can demonstrate their compliance with the with the regulations. So, starting with the um, the Sustainable Forest Management Standard, uh, the current version of the standard uh, ST1003 2018 version sets the benchmark requirements um, against which the national uh, forest management systems are endorsed. So in the UK, for example, we have the UK Woodland Assurance Standard, which is endorsed by, by PFC International. So it means anything that's grown against that standard in the UK can be sold as, as PFC certified and FSC certified. Book of Oz is, is endorsed by by both schemes. So there was a, um, a task force set up um, in December, uh, of which I was a member of. It was represented from a number of EU countries, represented from a number of non-EU countries. Uh, and also uh, we were seen as, UK was seen as a, a group on our own, given the Northern Ireland situation. Um, so the first step really was to look at how EDR, the requirements compared with the, uh, the requirements in the existing SFM benchmark standard. Looking at the forest categories, there's some, some differences between the two in the uh, in the PFC benchmark standard. Forests really are categorised either forest or uh, plantation or trees outside forests, whereas obviously within the UDR, there's different categories of forest, primary forest, natural regenerating, planted forest, plantation forest. So there's obviously differences there. Forest conversion, definition of uh, of conversion within the uh, within the, the PFC benchmark standard differed uh, with the um, deforestation uh, definition within EUDR. Degradation as well. Um, there's a very static clause within SD103 about a degraded forest is how it is defined. Whereas obviously there's a, a, a more of a dynamic clause within EUDR in terms of changing from one forest type to another. Also geolocation, uh, there was differences there in terms of in SD1003, whilst there was a uh, requirement to, for certificate holders to keep an inventory of, of uh, certified sites, there wasn't the specific geolocation requirements as specified in EUDR. So I believe there was a bit of a gap analysis, big discussion as well around cutoff date. Um, so in terms of the SD1003, um, the date or the conversion uh, cutoff date is December 2010, uh, whereas obviously with EUDR, the, uh, the, the deforestation date, degradation date is uh, December 2020. So there was some discussions about whether to maintain the existing cutoff date or whether to move it to the uh, and align it with the UDR. Also, there's discussion as well about whether to um, include EUDR as a modular approach to SFM or whether to actually fully incorporate the requirements into the standard. Uh, discussion about that, but the feeling was um, that full alignment a two-tier system approach to forest certification. Certainly in the UK, from a UK perspective, the prospect of certain certificate holders opting into EDR and some not could mean that uh, sawmills, et cetera, having their EUDR compliant pile of PFC certified logs and their non-EDR aligned uh, PFC certified logs was just seen to add a, a layer of complexity to uh, the supply chain that, that wasn't deemed to be necessary. So the, the approach has been to 
for full alignment of the uh, of the SFM standard. Um, so over the course of the last six months, uh, we've been working to um, produce a, a modified version of the ST103. And currently there's been 40 modifications made to the standard, um, mainly around the terms and definitions. Again, really aligning a lot of the terms and definitions that are contained within the standard against, uh, against those within EUDR. As you can see, in terms of the 40 modifications, 18 of those have been introductions of, of new definitions, new requirements. Uh, 15 have been uh, updates of existing requirements, and there's been seven removal of from the standard, which, are, which no longer align with, with EUDR requirements. Into detail into all 40 modifications today, but we did hold a webinar on the 12th of June uh, like Hubert Heiser uh, from the International Forestry Department um, uh, through the modifications in detail. The QR code there, if you follow that, will take you through take you through to a recording of the webinar, um, and that's that's accessible for all. And I can I can send you this in a separate document. I think we're going to share the slides, are we, Joe, at the end of this, so everyone will have access to that. Yes, thank you. So the, the ST1003 of the Epson timeline, um, the uh, draft or the inquiry draft of the amended standard was approved uh, by the PFC International Board on the 12th of May. Um, so a public consultation ran from the 14th of May, uh, has just ended on the 13th of July. Um, the results from the consultation will be con now considered by the SFM Working Group. Um, they're hoping to have reviewed the comments by the end of July 2024. Um, hopefully a final draft will be agreed by the end of August. Um, this will then get submitted to the PFS International Board. Um, at the, their next board meeting is slated for the September uh, 2024. If they approve the draft, there'll then be a postal ballot to the national and international stakeholder members, PFC UK or national member, PFC Ireland, etc. And we will get a vote on whether to approve the changes to the standard or not. Um, once that's approved, then the national governing bodies, we can then uh, officially commence adaptation of the of the standard from Q4, sorry, from Q4 of 2024. Obviously, once this, once we've got the approval, um, then the national standards will then need to align uh, with the uh, with the new standard. See, there is implications here on non-alignment at the moment that EUDR becomes active on the 30th of December 2024. So any timber that's coming from PFC certified forests in non-aligned national systems at that date will be treated as not fully EUDR certified, but it won't be fully aligned. So in which case, a more substantive DDS check will be required by the operator. As time goes by and the systems update, then eventually we'll get to a point where all material that's being produced from a PFC certified forest will be EUDR aligned. In terms of chain of custody in the standard, um, the chain of custody working group have, have coordinated um, the amendments to the, the proposed amendments to the chain of custody standard. Um, really they wanted a solution that was based on the current uh, chain of custody standard. Uh, so PFC standard 2002 2020. Um, and what they were looking for really is easy, easy integration with the existing chain of custody process. So really a, a, an add-on requirement um, to the existing chain of custody uh, requirements that would that would ensure EUDR compliance. And really what we're looking for that could be used by any organization within the supply chain who wanted to choose to use it. Also, bearing in mind that the chain of custody standard is, is global, um, there are some some uh, certificate holders who EUDR will be relevant to and others that it won't be. So really the idea was to have a, really introduce uh, the EUDR requirements as an optional modular approach uh, that company certificate holders could opt into if EUDR is relevant for those. And hence um, the PFC EUDR DDS uh, has, been, has been produced. So this will sit alongside the chain of custody standard and can be used instead of the existing uh, PFC DDS, which is covered in Section 7 and Appendix 1 of the Chain of Custody Standard. So the key elements of the, of the EUDR DDS is that it can be implemented at product group level. 
So certificate holders will be able to choose which DDS that they apply to their products. So if a company has you know, 10 products they're selling as certified, they know five of them are going to end up in the EU um, and five of them, in, you know, for example, may just stay in the UK. They can opt to apply the EUDR DDS to those five relevant products and implement the existing DDS to the other five. So it's very much up to the, the, the company to choose that certification. Uh, once the company dis determines whether they're going to um, you know, add on or use the, the PFC UDR DDS, they can then apply to their certification body for an extension of scope uh, for the specific product groups that they choose to be included. Um, and they'll require, they'll need to apply the uh, um, apply the DDS, the PFC EDR DDS to those products um, and require additional information. And the material that's gone through the um, the EU DRDS, there's a revised suite of a suite of claims that added to existing claims. So rather than PFC certified, 100% PFC origin, PFC control sources we are now, material that's gone through the EU DRDS will have this PFC EDR prefix to it. The key elements of the, the PFC EDR DDS, please a collection of information from incoming raw materials uh, and suppliers. Um, if material is delivered to a company under a PFC EDR claim that includes an EU information center reference number, then the information, uh, the, basically the claim can be passed on with information being available on request. Otherwise, um, if it's just supp supplied with a PFC EDR claim, but without a reference number, then a risk assessment will be required. Uh, and if no PFC EDR claim, EDR claim then a full risk can full risk assessment would need to be applied to the material. Risk assessment is split into four steps um, and separate uh, for risk needs to be analysed for risk of deforestation and forest degradation, risk of legality as defined by, by EUDR, um, risk of material originating from controversial sources and complexity of a mix in at supply chain level. These are the, the four um, really benchmarks of the of the risk assessment, which are there. So under the current uh, DDS, there are I think two tables uh, where um, material has to be assessed against against number of high risk indicators. Um, this is extended to a number to I think six tables now within the PFC EUDR DDS. And again, it's a matter of working through the um, the risk criteria and ensuring that you've collected. Um, of evidence that allows you to demonstrate that the material is low risk against each of the risk categories. In terms of where we are with the EUDR DDS, um, the public consultation of the um, of the of the DDS ended at the start of May 2024. Uh, Chain Custody Working Group meeting in Paris held in May uh, addressed the the comments that have been raised through the um, consultation and prepared a final draft. Uh, the final draft was submitted to the PFC board on the 12th of May. Um, yeah, approved the document, and that's gone out to the uh, to the members for for ballot of approval. That ballot ends on the 20th of July. Um, that document is approved. It will then PFC International will then roll out um, the accreditation, training, guidance information that can go to the certification bodies and to the uh, to the certificate holders. So the certification bodies will need to um, apply to their accreditation body for a scope extension to include the um, EDR DDS. Likewise, certificate holders will then have to apply to the um, to the certification bodies. Currently, um, we, as, as the national governing bodies and trainers for chain of custody, uh, we're due to go, due for training um, against just um, after that, we can then run country-specific courses uh, to update uh, training for auditors. Um, so we're probably looking at readiness um, in Q4 of this year. Third work stream was on data. Um, there's a data task force that was established, which uh, again had a number of, of stakeholders involved. And, and Maggie, who's on the call today, was, was included within that task force. Um, that, that geolocation harvesting data um, 
and how that was going to be managed was going to be left to the acting supply chain. And it was felt there was no real central role for PFC to to um, come up with a a, a one size fits all solution uh, to to data management. Um, there's a number of factors for this. One was at that point and still to a point now, I think there's there's some uncertainty in how much actual data there's going to be need to be handled and and data security etc was 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 also a, a consideration as well. So over the the last probably nine months, PFC have been engaging with a number of potential technology partners um, to basically be able to offer certificate holders a, a, a range of potential solutions um, that uh, certificate holders can choose um, whether to engage with a number of solutions or they may already have existing solutions they can use um, and to really leave the, the kind of data management, geolocation and harvesting information that really to, to the, to the uh, certificate holders and how they manage that and integrate it within the EU information system. Um, there's one partnership that's been agreed, YVO. Uh, that the partnership has been in discussion for a number of, of weeks and months, and has, has finally a, uh, been a, an agreed partnership with, with LiveVO. LiveVO have produced a, a trade aware system specifically for to our companies to, to demonstrate compliance with the EDR. Um, PFC have agreed a specific platform uh, within trade aware for certificate holders. Um, the system is based on the PFC EDR DDS requirement. So currently there is a, a checklist being worked through and agreed between PFC International and LiveEO that certificate holders will be able to use if they engage with the platform. And basically it will follow through uh, the PFC EDR DDS. Um, the platform will collect the geolocation, geospatial legal evidence from suppliers uh, and will have connectivity within the EU information system. Um, it'll also maintain supply chain confidentiality and um, the specific pricing structure for PFC certificate holders. Again, there's a designated uh, page about the system uh, on the PFC International website, and the um, there's a there's a QR code there to link to it. Um, LiveO, I mean, I've I've organised uh, some demonstrations for a number of for a couple of UK certificate holders. There is going to be um, a number of. of to demonstrate the system. Um, discussions are also ongoing uh, with a number of other providers, or Sapiens, Timberta, um, on again, possible uh, additional solutions as well that uh, certificate holders can, uh, can opt into if they want to. Really, again, no kind of imposition of any system. So it's up to the certificate holders to, to really to choose which which system works for them best in terms of, in terms of their supply chains and, and where they sit within the EDR. Um, but hopefully there's, uh, there's, there's potential solutions here which, uh, which certificate holders can take advantage of. So um, in terms of EU engagement, um, Maya Darsha, who's the, uh, the EU representative for, for PFC International, um, is in the room, as it were, in terms of discussions that are going on at an EU level. And it's something that we're keeping a look out uh, and looking for further information. Certainly the guideline documentation that has been that is imminent. I think it was uh, originally going to be available by the end of May. We're still waiting for it. Obviously in here, we're, we're aware that the role of certification schemes is going to be covered within the guideline document. And it's something that we're looking at with, with interest. Um, obviously we're aware that, that, that neither PFC, FSC will be a, a green lane, um, but obviously we, we've got great interest in how uh, the benefits of those certification systems are described and, and presented within the guideline document. Um, the EU information system, I think, has been previously covered where we are with that. Obviously, we, we um, a number of our certificate holders are going to be operators within EDR, so it's important that we we have an understanding of how in the uh, within the information system, and it, so it's something that we are we are. Um, FAQ document, I think it's going to be a key document. It's been discussed a number of times. Um, today, we're awaiting the updated version. Last time it was updated was December 2023. Um, we we'll promise it's imminent. Um, so, yeah, we are. We, we wait with bated breath to, to see that. Also, a country benchmarking system. Um, we understand that the, the EU is still working to a deadline of December 24th. Um, I think that's optimistic. Um, 
So currently every country has assigned a standard risk rated in terms of the, uh, the risk assessments that are required. So we are um, we are waiting to see which category the UK and other relevant countries will, will fall into. It is as well, um, I understand that there's still nine countries which have yet to assign a competence authority within the EU. Um, so it's something that we are we are keeping members updated on as well within these countries of, of who the monitoring organisation is is going to be. Um, so it's been a you know a tight timescale in terms of the work we're doing. Um, hopefully we are providing a, um, a solution that our certificate holders can use to to demonstrate their compliance with EDR. Um, obviously what what we aren't doing here, we're providing a set of tools. Um, it's still the, the certificate holder's responsibility to demonstrate their legal compliance with the EDR. Um, hopefully we are, like I say, able to provide a, a set of tools, tools, a set of solutions that allow um, that demonstration to be as easy as possible for them. So that's all I want to cover. Um, hopefully we've got a bit of time there and uh, I'll hand over back to you, Joe.